We have tackled many strange stories on 60 Minutes, but perhaps none like this. It's the story of the U.S. government's grudging acknowledgement of unidentified aerial phenomena, UAP, more commonly known as UFOs. Finally, the government has acknowledged the existence of UFOs, which coincided with the release of this footage of a UFO, which I think you'll agree blows away completely all the previously declassified and leaked UFO footage. It clearly depicts a craft with no control surfaces, which is hovering and slowly descending. There are no signs of propulsion on this craft, yet it defies gravity whilst emitting this strange aura, which has been widely speculated by experts to be some sort of anti-gravity drive. It was capable of hypersonic speed, observed by hundreds of witnesses, none of whom could explain what they saw because it was jamming their radar. This is it, people. These things are real. The evidence is overwhelming. And we now have a threat, an unknown threat that we need to figure out. So, Sean, it's not that you're worried about something out of a movie uh, coming to get you. It's about... Um the threat right here on Earth and how it's being motivated without our knowledge and ability to counter. The U.S. has already spent over $20 million examining these craft, which display motions that defy our understanding of reality. It's already being taken to Congress and not only covered by 60 minutes in this viral video with millions of hits, but also covered by the BBC, CNN and Fox News. Next month, Congress is set to be briefed on UFOs when a long-awaited Pentagon report is released. UFOs, it turns out, are real. And whatever else they are, they are a prima facie challenge to the U.S. military. Stand by for action. I am a battle station. Anything can happen in the next half hour. Decades of public denial, the U.S. government is now acknowledging the existence of unidentified aerial phenomena, UAP. What we often call UFOs. The U.S. Senate has ordered now the Director of National Intelligence and the Secretary of Defense to deliver a report on the topic. Sightings. The Pentagon admits what's depicted in the videos captured by U.S. military is something they can't explain. In 2015, the U.S. Navy captured this video on a targeting camera of a UAP off the coast of Jacksonville. Look at that thing. Okay, I've got to admit, I was being a little tongue-in-cheek there. This is actually from some guy on YouTube who, I've got to say, has some pretty awesome infrared video of military planes. This one is an F-18 in the infrared. The point should be made pretty clearly at this point. Things in the infrared don't necessarily look like they do in visible light. And yeah, links below to this guy because he really does have some very impressive footage there. But yeah, this video of an F-18 coming into land absolutely blows out of the water the uh, leaked videos of UFOs in just how much anti-gravity it emits whilst it's hovering there. Now, it's the most common appeal to authority on this subject is these guys are fighter pilots for the US military, trained professionals with hundreds of hours of experience. And you're just some guy on YouTube. Well, yeah. But just because they're fighter pilots or worked in the Pentagon or something, that doesn't mean that they can't be UFO nuts as well. Uh, further, I do something that none of these um, fighter pilots do. I do the numerical analysis of the actual data. Meanwhile, let's take a look at one of these um, amazing fighter pilots analysis of some infrared footage. Bear in mind that this is a pilot who claims to have seen hundreds of UFOs whilst not managing to take a picture of any of them. He told us his F-18 squadron began seeing UAPs hovering over restricted airspace southeast of Virginia Beach in 2014. Oh, sorry. Uh, they managed to get these amazing pictures of them with the world's most sophisticated aircraft in the world's top military. Every day. Every day for 
at least a couple of years. Um, wait a minute, every day for a couple of years? Mm -hmm. Oh, and um, his sophisticated analysis of the infrared footage. You know, I don't see an exhaust plume. Including this one. Uh, tell me again, where exactly is the exhaust plume on this UFO? Oh, that's right, there isn't one, which means it's got no signs of propulsion, right? And then, of course, there's this uh, ex-Pentagon official who doesn't seem to realize that uh, what things look like in the infrared is not what they look like in reality. Our meeting with Hollywood visual effects supervisor Sam Edwards. There's no such thing as a light source that follows around behind an aircraft. So the system is in black hot mode. What that tells me, if black is hot, there's a cold region. Mm -hmm. You typically are going to be you know, warm coming out of the exhaust or near your engine or whatever. Doesn't argue that it's not a conventional propulsion system? Wow, black hot with a white aura means that it's not a conventional propulsion system. So it couldn't possibly be, say, an edge enhancement image processing on the camera or something. Engines Doesn't that argue that it's not a conventional propulsion system? Well, yeah, okay, these are the nutty fringe. I mean, what would be real Twilight Zone stuff is if we had the mainstream media, like, say, for instance, Fox News or something, covering an out-of-focus plane as evidence that the U.S. military is utterly outclassed and arguing that the U.S. military that has already spent some $20 million investigating this should go into full panic mode about this. Actually, now I think about it, there is this classic episode of the Twilight Zone about an alien invasion called The Monsters A Jew on Maple Street. Lights go on and off, unexplained phenomena, and people turn into panicky idiots and destroy themselves. Throw them into darkness for a few hours and then sit back and watch the pattern. Their world is full of Maple Streets, and we'll go from one to the other and let them destroy themselves. Yep, the aliens' invasion plan is... People are dumb, panicky, dangerous animals, and you know it. The episode was later remade with a more modern twist to it. So, in the event of a perceived terrorist attack, isolated communities will sustain themselves for five hours. I'll tell you one thing, if the other civilian security tests one like this, we're all in trouble. The moral of the story is clear. People are insatiable monsters, given a seemingly harmless unknown. Nah, it... It has to be enemy action, an attack of some sorts, and we have to take action against it. It isn't enough for a sole voice of reason to exist. In this time of uncertainty, we're so sure that villains lurk around every corner that we will create them ourselves if we can't find them. Yeah, I know, it's the Twilight Zone. It's an imaginary spoof of mankind. There's no way it could happen in reality. Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. The United States remains the most powerful country in the world. The relatively few Americans have considered what would happen if we slipped from that perch. Would it matter if America became subordinate to other nations? I told you it was going to be the Twilight Zone. You know, yeah, sure. Just because um, America is bigger than France, that means that France is subordinate to America. Good luck with that. The top countries give the orders, the rest of the planet takes the orders, whether they like it or not. Yes, this is the might makes right universe where whatever America says, everyone else has to do because America is bigger, which is why Iran always immediately does whatever America tells it to do. The conflicts the Pentagon says it's preparing for often seem comically small and outdated almost from colonial times, whether it's wrangling with illiterate tribesmen in Afghanistan, that's very important. So true. If only there was a Men in Black clip that could remind us why America was in Afghanistan in the first place. Wrangling with illiterate tribesmen in Afghanistan, that's very important. Your job is to defend it, please do so. Yet it's becoming clear they have no interest in defending it. And here's the latest evidence of that. It comes from CBS last night. This is a clip from a 60 Minutes report on, of all things, UFOs and the US military. Watch this. <laughs> A Navy air crew struggles to lock on to a fast-moving object off the U.S. Atlantic coast in 2015. Wow, CBS really did their due diligence there. I mean, your suspicion should have been first clued in when, yeah, you can just about make out it flapping its wings. You know, boom, 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 boom. 
You know, all you really had to do was understand what the numbers on the display meant and you could work it all out with maybe the most simplest being the range to the object coming up as about four miles, which means seeing as you know the field of view of the camera, you can work out that the object is about a meter long, about the size of a decent bird. And it's whizzing along because the plane is at about 20,000 feet, the bird at about 10,000 feet, and the plane is going past it at about the speed of sound. These aircraft carriers that many of these UFOs have been interacting with, obviously these are billion dollar assets. And if the official position of the most powerful Navy in the world is frankly little more than we don't know what this is, I don't think that's good enough. But these must just be weather balloons, right? Well, the weather balloons that are expressing technologies that are far beyond our current understanding of aerodynamics, things that are, are maneuvering in ways that no aircraft that we are currently aware of has that capability to. It's just, I think it's just, I think it's terrifying. I mean, this seems potentially like one of the biggest stories of my lifetime, and I don't care if it's about UFOs or whatever you call it. Something that we don't understand is getting very close to our military aircraft, and the government isn't responding adequately, and I hope you keep sounding the alarm on this. We have tackled many strange stories on 60 Minutes, but perhaps none like this. Oh yeah, that was really powerful reporting from CBS there. If only they'd gone through the numbers, they could have worked out that it's about the size of a duck, flapping its wings like a duck and traveling at about the speed of a duck. I wonder whether it was aliens. <laughs> Recently released images may not convince UFO skeptics, but the Pentagon admits it doesn't know what in the world this is. Yeah, CBS hits it out the park again with an out of focus plane. The um, flashing navigation lights are a bit of a giveaway. I wonder whether it was aliens who decided to add FAA compliant navigation light to their super advanced gravity driven spacecraft. An alien spacecraft, which I should stress, has appeared to people all over the world. This is the most amazing evidence ever. <laughs> but only in front of people who can't actually focus their camera. You don't like your fleet of uh, triangular shaped UFOs because it's not illegal. You can actually just focus the camera you know, down to point. And then, of course, it's not quite so cryptic anymore. Oh, UFOs, they're spooky and kind of funny. Crazy people believe in them. Up until you get to the line, the Pentagon admits it doesn't know what in the world this is. The Pentagon admits it doesn't know what in the world this is. And that's where you pause. Because from a national security perspective, that is a very big problem. You're right, Tucker. That is a serious problem. Yes, we definitely need to help these high-level Pentagon officials to hone their avian identification skills. Thankfully, a advanced educational series already exists that will aid the top minds in US intelligence to improve their skills to truly world-class levels. Rubber ducky, you're the one. You make bath time lots of fun. How big a problem is it? One Navy pilot said that the U.S. military has observed unidentified flying objects maneuvering in restricted airspace off the coast of Virginia, quote, every day for two years. Yeah, and for every day for two years, he forgot to take his camera to take a picture of them. Odd that. Every day for years. Now, flying in restricted airspace is not a small thing. Yet the Pentagon, after every day for two years of daily incursions didn't appear to do anything about it. Why didn't they? Oh, I don't know, Tucker. Maybe for the same reason they didn't do anything about Elvis sightings. All of those multiple Elvis sightings with the flying Elvis Utah chapter must prove that Elvis has discovered some sort of dark lich technology that will allow him to reincarnate himself multiple times. Multiform resurrection seems like the sort of thing that the US military should take seriously. I mean, if he's mastered coming back from the dead, who knows what other powers he might have. Something lethal. Why is no one in the military taking this seriously? I mean, surely they should be spending millions of dollars on such a serious threat, right? 
We're just guessing one possible explanation, they couldn't. Our military was completely outmatched technologically right. by whatever right. these were. Let me get this straight. The stunning evidence of a bird filmed in the infrared and an out of focus commercial plane and literally thousands of sightings that didn't yield a single piece of evidence is now apparently evidence that the US military is being massively outperformed by by infrared bird and out of focus plane. At this point, my money's on the skydiving Elvises. Yeah, look, Bill, I, I'm not I'm not telling you that that it doesn't sound wacky. What I'm telling you is real. Imagine a technology that can do six to seven hundred G-forces, that can fly at thirteen thousand miles an hour, that uh, it can evade radar, and that can fly through air and water and possibly space. And oh, by the way, has no obvious signs of propulsion, no wings, no control surfaces, and yet still can defy the natural effects of Earth's gravity. That's precisely what we're seeing. Yeah, those aren't the properties of our real world. Those are the properties of magic. You know, even if it is extraterrestrials, they still are made up of the stuff of the universe. You know, atoms and molecules and obey the basic rules of that universe, like um, thermodynamics. Except what you're proposing doesn't obey the laws of thermodynamics. And if there's one thing that's never been observed ever, it's a violation of the laws of thermodynamics. I mean, it's just like Sarah saying, it's a magic word, and all of a sudden, rather than there being one of you, there are 10 of you. It's magic. It's just magic. So what Tucker, CNN, and the BBC are essentially advocating for here is that the US government, having thus far blown some $20 million on a military uh, intelligence that couldn't identify a bird in the infrared and an out of focus plane should now blow millions of dollars more because bird in the infrared and out of focus plane might be evidence of magic. Sound like a potential threat, you think? So what has the Pentagon done about it? Well, we don't know the full story as of tonight, but we don't know that they've done anything about it other than ignore it. I know, it's such a failure of American intelligence that they don't believe in magic. The sad thing is we have a whole new branch of the military that might be perfectly designed to assess what these things are and figure out if they're a threat or not and maybe respond. If there was ever a reason to have Space Force, this might be it. Actually, Tucker, stuff that doesn't fall within the uh, laws of physics would probably be investigated by um, Wizard Force or, if you're feeling very generous, uh, Space Wizard Force. So every day for two years, unidentified flying objects behaving in ways that seem to contradict what we know about physics. And the US military is spending its time as of right now purging its ranks. What does this remind you? Maybe the Soviet army, 1938? Um, uh, no. For the purges of the 30s have decimated its leadership. 90% of its generals, 80% of its colonels, and well over half its core commanders had been put to death at Stalin's whim. Yeah, I think I remember that in the last news cycle that 90% of American generals had been executed. You know, on a political whim. Every single commander of a military district was eliminated. Every single commander of an army division has been eliminated. Wow, America has gotten so much worse than I remember. Every single commander of a regiment, with some exceptions here, also eliminated. The army was beheaded, suits. So and the US military is spending its time, as of right now, purging its ranks. What does this remind you? Maybe the Soviet army, 1938? Yeah, I think this is what would normally be called um, alternative history a clear and present threat appears on the horizon but the people in charge are so obsessed with political purity and loyalty to the party yeah you know the words peak stupidity are thrown around a lot these days so much so that they've kind of lost their meaning but i think what we might have here is maybe the most archetypal embodiment of peak stupidity ever that they can't respond because they're absorbed in attacking their own organization when they say that all revolutions are the same, they're right. UFOs, it turns out, are real. Rubber ducky, you're the one. And whatever else they are, they are a prima facie challenge to the US military. You make bath time lots of fun. They are doing things the US military does not allow, and they're doing it with impunity. Rubber ducky, I'm awfully fond of you. And they appear to be focused on the US military. 
I know it's dangerous, but let's just logically pass that for a second, shall we? So you think there are aliens who have this magical technology? Imagine a technology that can do six to 700 G-forces, that can fly at 13,000 miles an hour. I have walked across the surface of the sun. I have witnessed events so tiny and so fast, they can hardly be said to have occurred at all. And that can fly through air, and water and possibly space. And oh, by the way, has no obvious signs of propulsion, no wings. And they appear to be focused on the US military. The world's smartest man poses no more threat to me than does its smartest termite. UFOs for decades appear to have clustered around our military installations, our ships and our aircraft with no real response except more secrecy. So according to Tucker, there are these uh, godlike beings, and one of their amazing superpowers is to appear only in front of American military personnel who can't operate a camera. Fine, Tucker. Ninjas do this sort of thing all the time. In fact, there was this amazing Fox News article covering it earlier this year. Today, crowds turned out for the annual Modesto County Ninja Parade, which once again passed through town entirely undetected. This is our fourth straight year coming in. We've still never seen a ninja. It's amazing how the ninjas can sneak by undetected on us. The kids love trying to be able to spot them and, and not being able to. Only once in 1984 was any evidence of the parade's presence captured on film. Oh yeah, Taka. If, if ninjas can go down Main Street completely unnoticed. And that can fly through air and water and possibly space. And they could sneak in to the Pentagon. A clear and present threat appears on the horizon. They are doing things the US military does not allow and they're doing it with impunity. Or other top military intelligence installations. And naturally, if we consider that these aliens can do all these remarkable things that completely outclass the military, we should definitely consider the prospect that they're shapeshifters as well. And whatever else they are, they are a prima facie challenge to the US military. In fact, why should the US waste its time studying the UFOs with defective cloaking technology that can occasionally be seen? Surely they should be much more worried about the ones that leave no evidence that they were there at all. Just days ago, the Pentagon confirmed that an 18-second video of three UFOs harassing a U.S. warship called the USS Russell is, in fact, real. Holy crap! I mean, the lines of reality and parody blend seamlessly at this point. Here you have one of the most popular news anchors in America, with a straight face reporting that an out-of-focus plane with its clearly visible FAA-compliant navigation lights flying past Two stars is now a fleet of three UFOs harassing an American destroyer. Yeah, sure, Tucker. I get harassed by thousands of UFOs on every clear night, even more so when I'm near an airport. I mean, how can there be hundreds of these triangular UFOs harassing airports every single night and no one takes it seriously? This is the most amazing evidence ever. The script has flipped. And people are now taking this seriously and eliminating the unnecessary ridicule that has stigmatized the UFO topic. This is the most compelling evidence for UFO. Oh my God, it's vanished. That must mean it's got some sort of cloaking technology as, oh my God, it's reappeared again. No one could, oh, hang on. Maybe if I focus a little, maybe if I focus a little, no, well, uh, the people might see that just flew behind the building. <laughs> yeah, the US military is going to have to spend an awful lot of money to identify them all. That footage was shot in July of 2019 and collected by the UFO's, Uf Pentagon's UFO task force, then wound up in the hands of Jeremy Corbell, the journalist who put it online. I think calling him a journalist is pretty generous. UFO nut is probably closer to the mark. But what's that? On top of these amazing triangular, sorry, uh, pyramid-shaped UFOs, Corbell has obtained this amazing evidence of transmedium vehicles. Whoa, it's getting close. On a pitch black night off the coast of California, newly leaked video allegedly shows one of the U.S. Navy's stealth ships tracking an unknown object in the sky. It's a plane. Yeah, seriously, just go take a look at what planes in the infrared look like.
It's a plane. Stealth ships tracking an unknown object in the sky. And after a few minutes... It's splashed. It's splashed. It's splashed. Mark bearing a range. The 2019 footage obtained by filmmaker Jeremy Corbell, who last month released another video of an upside-down pyramid UFO hovering above a Navy destroyer. Now, wow, that is amazing. A truly transmedium vehicle. So let's take a quick look at the high-resolution version of that video. Six foot Mark bearing a range. Yeah, truly an amazing transmedium vehicle that can be seen every night at about sunset. The phenomena is also called going over the horizon. So a plane flying away from you going over the horizon looks like this. Six foot twelve. Whoa, it's getting close. Yeah, we have a thirty-one knot sustained wind, topside gust of forty. What was splashed? Splashed. Mark bearing a range. And you included there, Jeremy, in your information the exact coordinates. As you said, a submarine was sent after this. No wreckage. Wow, that's amazing. A plane flying over the horizon doesn't leave wreckage. And you'll be shocked to find out that uh, Jeremy Corbell, the um, journalist, the one who thought that an out-of-focus plane was evidence of a gravity drive of some sort. It appears the propulsion system is a field propulsion system, that these craft might possibly be gravitationally propelled. Thinks that plane going over the horizon is also evidence of um, an anti-gravity drive or something. Yeah, this is so important. If what we are witnessing is a true transmedium vehicle, a vehicle that can penetrate that barrier between air and sea or, or air and space without destruction, then we're looking at a propulsion system that is so far advanced, it's beyond next generation technology. So we're probably looking at, and what it is theorized is we're looking at, is a gravitational propulsion system. Yeah, Congress really is investigating this. 60 Minutes really is doing documentaries on this. Fox News is agitating that the US military should take this as one of its most serious challenges ever. Something that they should spend millions of dollars on. All based on evidence like an out of focus plane. The monsters are indeed due on Maple Street. So that's the video today. Drop a thumbs up on it for a not quite the only voice of reason in the wilderness on this topic, but one of the few. Subscribing for new videos like this is only a click away. And as ever, if you really like the content of this channel, you can support it directly through Patreon. And uh, thanks for watching.